Welcome to our Lunchtime Live program on WJEJ, a partnership the third Thursday of the month with Washington County Public Schools. This is Will Kaufman from the Public Information Office. Uh, today's show is sponsored by Volvo Group Trucks, a premier employer in Washington County. Follow them on Facebook at Volvo Group Hagerstown or visit the website volvogroup.com slash Hagerstown, Volvo Group Trucks. My guest today, Dr. Stacy Henson, Supervisor of Early Learning. Kelly Longerbeam joins us for the first time, an early learning specialist with the school system, a lead teacher at Funkstown Primary. We will talk about the young ones, the small ones, the early learners. Stacy, welcome back. Thank you. Kelly, welcome to the show. It's good to be here. Good to have the both of you. It's, uh, it's certainly an, impor- an important subject because we need to get them started. We need to get them started early and started in, a, in quality fashion. Um, Stacy, over the course of a summer, what, do, what, is, what do you and your people do to prepare for a school year? Well, right now we're really thrilled to announce that we are in the process of making sure that children at every elementary school have access to pre-K. So starting in the fall in all of our elementary schools, there will be a full day pre-K classroom offered um, with eligibility requirements first. And then if we have additional spots, those that are over income may also apply. The only schools that um, it's a little unique would be Eastern Elementary School because it's an intermediate school. And Fountaindale Elementary School's pre-K program is actually going to be housed at North Hagerstown High School. And those students, the little hubs, the little hubs, <laughs> those students will work with a pre-K teacher, but alongside the teacher academy. So the high school students will have interactions with the students as well that are a part of that program. Who sets that up? That, that's a, that, that's a nifty program. I mean, giving the kids and the high school kids an, an early line on on education instruction. Right. Last year, the high school principal actually met with us and suggested that in order to really increase the, um, I guess, the rigor of his program, but also he wanted to entice students to become part of the teacher academy because we Mm -hmm. see less and less people interested in the teaching profession. And so at that time, they had students in the program, um, pre-K students in the program, but it was only a couple days a week for a few hours at a time, so they didn't have full access to really see the growth and the learning progressions that occur in a full day of instruction. So we decided to pilot it last year. It went really well, and we were thrilled with the progress that the students made both at the high school level and our little um, four-year-olds. So we certainly are gonna continue that program again next year. And it does allow then also Fountaindale students that are four-year-olds to access a program that they didn't have prior to that. Is it easier to find teaching candidates for the younger, youngest kids? Um, I would say without having data in front of me, it's probably, I I would say yes. Um, A lot of people really have a strong interest in pre-K, but it truly does take a very gifted teacher to interact all day long, to be totally engaging, but also have the pedagogy required to really fully know and understand developmentally appropriate practices for four-year-olds. Uh, I mean, is it are the challenges somewhat the same, though, as any other teacher? I mean, a good full school year, all day, no matter, no matter what age they are, obviously it presents its unique set of challenges with the, with the youngest of these kids. But I, what, what makes a strong teacher in these, at, at these kinds of grade levels? I would say somebody that truly understands developmentally appropriate practices and implements the academics, but also the social skills that are necessary for our children to succeed. Somebody that has a great balance of that, but also you have to be completely passionate about little little ones to be good at what you do. And, and good teaching at any level is good teaching, but at the same time, it takes a really unique personality, patience, um, hmm. and, and a sense of humor, and somebody that's really, honestly, you probably put on 15 Broadway performances a day in a pre-K classroom, so you have to really be entertaining and and full of life to, to do it well. Well, where's the balance between the, the entertainment, and I know what you mean, folks know what you mean, and, and the actual uh, academics of it? What, what do academics look like for a four-year-old? Well, we're really strategic in making sure that, you know, our, our kidlings come in with a really strong... I'm sorry. Our, our kids come in. What did you say? <laughs> I call them kidlings, but they come <laughs> that's in. That's what I kinder. thought. They come in. I didn't know kinder. if that was an official Washington <laughs> County term, or no, that's, a, that's just your that's cute phrase for the for the little ones. They they come into <laughs> kindergarten with a strong sense of concepts of print, so they understand how text works. So that's part of our um, 
instruction at the reading level at the math level level we really want to give them a strong number sense so it's beginning skills also academic but at the same time we're pushing in the importance of play-based instruction um, and just our our centers are allowing the students to learn those social foundation skills like getting along how to make friends how to ask for help when you need to things that sometimes we we hear from businesses in the adult world that our adults are coming to them without those skills so we know that it's important to teach those skills early alongside the academics so that they don't have those lack of lack those skills later on when they're entering the workforce is this our curriculum is there an accepted curriculum for pre-k i mean is like like state mandates or are we doing what we do what we believe is best for curriculum how, how does that work we have created in washington county public schools um, our own modules that are curriculum based but they align directly with the the, the state common core standards mm -hmm. so there are pre-k common core standards as well if you're just joining us, Dr. Stacy Henson is Supervisor of Early Learning for Washington County Public Schools. Kelly Longerbeam is joining us today, an early learning specialist with the school system, also lead teacher at Funkstown Primary. Today's show is sponsored by Volvo Group Trucks, a premier employer in Washington County. Follow them on Facebook at Volvo Group Hagerstown or visit the website volvogroup.com slash Hagerstown. What does the lead teacher at Funkstown Primary do? Sure. My role is to help assist teachers with any type of needs they have, whether they need help with planning, they need help with classroom um, management, if they need help with collecting data or analyzing their data, preparing lessons, if they need help reflecting on those lessons. I also go into classrooms and do lessons for the teachers and just interact with the students on a daily basis. Does your work vary from other elementary schools? Other does it work differently at Funkstown than it would at any number of other elementary no, schools? No, I'm just probably on the floor a lot more. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess that is one difference between any other grade level. Yes. Um, and and uh, when I asked Stacy about just, you know teaching candidates and all of that, describe describe the folks at Funkstown. I would one of the first things that comes to my mind is that they all have a huge heart for children and they love what they do every day and. They love those children like they're their own, and they're just passionate about what they do, and they're continuing to grow as professionals and attending um, professional developments and attending conferences because they want to be better at what they do. Um, we have different kinds of program opportunities for kids of all ages, all ages, and now we're going to have that for kids who are four. Correct. Advanced learners at the age of four. Yes. So last year we had this idea, we do um, early men's testing for kindergarten. So we have some of these kids who were testing who were not quite ready yet for kindergarten, but we knew that they had these skills that if we put them in a regular pre-K, you know, they might be bored. So we started this advanced learner pre-K program. This was the first year we had it at Funkstown. And basically it is a blend of pre-K and K standards. So they're moving at a faster pace than what a regular pre-K classroom would be. It's a lot more of um, like a STEM focus. They do a lot of with engineering, hands-on learning, but still has that concept of pre-K though with the centers and the play. They're just doing more of those advanced skills. What happens when those kids get to, print, uh, to, to kindergarten? I mean, are they ready to just blow through <laughs> kindergarten? Well, we've actually had you know that discussion and had, that's been brought up with questions and we actually had a very large transition meeting this past spring with all of our pre-k and all of our k teachers we met and they were able to collaborate and share information so that information was passed from that advanced learner pre-k teacher mm -hmm. to that kindergarten teacher already so they have information on them and already know at what level they are do you, i don't know if this is fair um and, and it it's totally unfounded but is, is there any is there anything to actually not getting kids too far ahead at any level, but certainly at a very, very young level, where, where the real sharp kids are ready to go. They're ready to go to kindergarten in October mm -hmm. or beyond. What, what do you do about that? Well, I always feel like at that age, they're like sponges. So they want to keep learning and absorbing everything. And I mean, they want to just keep learning. They have that drive and that motivation. And we want to keep that motivation. We don't want to just say, oh, you're ready for kindergarten. Now we're going to stop. We want to keep them, you know, excelling. The, the process then, when do you, 
how, how, do you work with parents on that? How, oh, yes, okay. absolutely. That teacher um, with pre-K, we only do report cards in November and then also in the spring. This teacher took it upon herself to do progress reports every marking period. So they had that information of how their child was doing, and she was very collected a lot of data on these students and really looked at those pre-K and K standards and made decisions with them. What was in that, what was in that report? Sure. It was actually a... Um, had all of the standards listed and she would put things as well also the social emotional piece was also listed in there. and how many kids how many kids did there she is, have she had 19 this year oh that's a lot <laughs> I, I mean it seems like it and we actually had such success with the program and the need of it we actually will have two advanced learner programs this coming school year and that's ju that's just at Funkstown it is just at Funkstown is it this sounds like it would work anywhere yes absolutely I think so the reason um, for the Funkstown pieces, we already have one teacher there so that they can be more collaborative in their instruction. Mm -hmm. We figured if we place both of them at that site, they can team teach. And then we can even, we can kind of move students from one group to another if we find that necessary. So we really truly guide our instruction based on the, the progress of the child. Uh, would it, what would it take to move this into other schools? Well, I think we look because really I, I, I think, uh, I, I, and I'm sorry for interrupting already, but it seems like to me, it seems like there ought to be a lot of enthusiasm over this. Um, right. It's so fresh and new, mm -hmm. and, and we're still really trying to look at the data that's mm -hmm. coming out of it, too. So we're going to probably really monitor these students as they progress longitudinally through their, through their education as well to see if we're really doing what's best for kids, because absolutely that's where we want to put our focus. Um, for now, because it's new, we really look at our enrollment numbers and, and the requests for testing. Mm -hmm. So on our application, parents can select if they're interested in their child being assessed for the advanced learner classroom. So we'll really make a lot of those decisions based on the number of uh, based on the interest in the program right. but it's still um how about the very aggressive parent in some community other than funkstown okay that program's for my child because he's going to mi he she's going to mit eventually i know that now at the age of three and four i mean is there like special exceptions just based on kids sure. so funkstown um, school doesn't have an attendance zone so oh. we accept students from all across right. the county right. into the program so it's not just a program that's zoned for the students that live in the Funkstown area it's a program both classrooms will be a program designed for anybody in the county so if you have a parent somewhere else that that feels like their child is is advanced and would benefit from the program they can they're welcome to apply and attend and we even actually leave space in that classroom. So when the school year starts, there are a couple seats still available because there might be students in another class or another school that are showing those advanced skills. We can actually move them into that program then. Do we sell the general community on this and the availability and the opportunity? I mean, I, I don't, I'm not aware of any major marketing campaign. Hey, consider this, parents. So we're really, you know, quietly... Um, taking on kids and or identifying kids elsewhere in the county or, or or aren't we even doing that I mean we're not actively identifying them if if a child excels somewhere else other than in the setting right at the start of the year do we offer that up to that set of parents Yes, we, we're, we're trying to be really strategic in making sure that we have the right kids in that classroom. Mm -hmm. So last year we didn't advertise it strongly because it was a new program sure. we were just piloting. This year's the first year we put it on the application. So any parent that has a pre-K application in front of them would see the availability of that and the, and the opportunity to, to at least apply for the, for the testing for it. Right. We've also communicated with all the pre-K teachers and all the administrators at each elementary school to say, if you have a student that comes to you in September and they are really a shining star and would benefit from this program, let's take a look at them and maybe hmm. that's a child we can transition to Funkstown after a week or two of school. Right. And that, that just getting them to function, that's on the parent. Right. It's the a parents, private transportation. The, okay. Mm -hmm. So that would be, that's not our responsibility, but that would be, um, God, that's fascinating. <laughs> I, I, I mean, it really, really is, is because these opportunities, these, these are all new, I, I, mm -hmm. whether it's a, of some current vintage or generationally, this, these kinds of opportunities have never been there. Right. And, and it's extremely fascinating when you walk into the classroom and see 
what these children have the ability to do because it still looks like a pre-k classroom when you go in as far as there's play based mm -hmm. centers and right. and the teachers still full of life and it's still but the things that these children are producing is just remarkable mm -hmm. um all within a pre-k classroom if you lined all of the kids up at funkstown that you you <laughs> this sounds goofy, but you can't you can't tell the advanced learner kids from the others. They're not um, yeah. because they're still all of them are still mm -hmm. getting the same like so, work in social skills and work in play and yes. those kinds of things. So it's right. not as if you know it's not as if these kids are blinking neon green because they're <laughs> no. they're the advanced kids. Right. Um, <laughs> all right. Uh, tell us about the application process We're all across the board, pre-K and kindergarten. Uh, the guidelines, the, you okay. know, the dates. So the application process actually started in March, and you can obtain an application from our website under the Early Learning Department, or they are accessible in hard copy at every elementary school. So the first thing a parent would do if they're interested or a family member would be to pick up an application, complete that, and that would need turned in with a proof of income because our state requires that our priority is income eligible students first. So then those documents are processed through my office and we either add students if they're eligible to a list or if they're over income, we place them on a wait list. And then what we do actually starting next week, we'll take a look at how long our wait lists are. If we can shift some students around so that we can move some, some students that may be over income into one of the programs, we will do that. But obviously we still look for income eligibility first because that's a requirement of us. Um, that's pretty much students have to be four by september 1st to qualify for the program we do not do that's any for pre-k pre right. we don't do any early admittance to pre-k testing like we do for kindergarten okay. um, that's a little bit different but we prefer they're only four we prefer that the age eligibility right. requirement stays in place right what are these kids doing prior to that before they go to pre-k has that changed ac across the community um, this this community or any community what well, what are kids doing up to the age of four so what we hope that they're doing <laughs> is <laughs> yeah in, in in our deliriously ideal world here this afternoon yes yeah, so really what our, our biggest push is that kids are being exposed to literature text books in their hands on a daily basis even before the age of a four it's vital that they come to us with some experience with literacy the other the other push that we continue to advocate for is you know really they they're coming to us with some limited listening and speaking skills so the more parents and family members can interact with their kids and talk to them and take them places and expose them to things that they you know just giving them life experiences would be really helpful as they enter a pre-k classroom and and simple life skills potty training feeding themselves dressing themselves those types of things are really things that parents can work on but ultimately the social skills are probably the number one push just students and children interacting with one another learning how to follow rules learning how to when they do have a problem knowing how to ask for help knowing how what respect means hmm. or not necessarily that word but how do i show respectful behaviors those types of things are just truly beneficial to us as students come to us and i would just add probably one another large important thing to do is just to get down on the floor and play with your child and just just, yeah, I mean, just, just interact. Yes. I mean, we could do. And that's how we, they we, learn. We, we could just stop for the lecture about cell phones <laughs> and about uh, all of the rest of that, um, and and it would probably be worth it at some point, and then more points along the way. But there are some basic things um, which are lost on many households for any number of reasons. But man, that that sense of getting your child ready to be to be a learner, to you know, to understand new things around him or her. You know, and I, you know, some families do have some limitations. They have income limitations. Maybe they can't get out and about to do some of the things that would, even if they can't physically get to a park, things like that, much less acquiring books. But we have library branches. We have, you know, we have outdoor experiences everywhere near every neighborhood around the county. Mm -hmm. I mean, it really is about that. It's about taking a simple walk and teaching your children colors and talking to them about sounds and things like that that just can be done with minimal mm -hmm. resources, but just 
an adult and a child interacting. It's Mm -hmm. vitally important. We've had a lot of push. We talked about this before we started, and it's a risky direction to take. Uh, But but community-wide, um, there, there's been much more emphasis on, on, on readiness, school readiness, which means that period up to it's not about it's not about going from pre-K to kindergarten. It's about those kids coming into school, a, a, a formal school setting for the first time. What what are the I, I, you have to be aware of at least some of the efforts community-wide. Uh, how how are those things put together to benefit the school system? Are those things benefiting the school system? I would say absolutely. We have um, some new initiatives. We have On Track Washington County, the Early Childhood Advisory Council, and there's so many more. I couldn't. I, I know I'd be. I'm going to be remiss in, in naming many of them. But there's a lot of community partners that are getting together, and they implement things like parent cafes and learning parties. Many of our churches are involved in those things just to really communicate to parents, here are the expectations, but here's how. Here's different ways to, to interact with your child. Here is from birth to age four, before they even enter the school doors, the, here's some things that you can do to truly have your child better prepared and to be ready to interact with other students and adults in, in a school setting. If you're just joining us, Dr. Stacy Henson is here, Supervisor of Early Learning for Washington County Public Schools. Kelly Longerbeam joins us as a lead teacher at Funkstown Primary and an early learning specialist uh, who branches easily beyond Funkstown. Today's show is spo- our lunchtime live show, as we call it, uh, sponsored today by Volvo Group Trucks, a premier employer in Washington County. You can follow them on Facebook at Volvo Group Hagerstown or visit the website volvogroup.com slash Hagerstown. We appreciate the support of Volvo Group Trucks. If somebody wanted to, uh, community members, whether they have a... Uh, a, a slice of the school system in their in their lives, families, in their work, or whatever, or anybody. How can someone contribute, for instance, at the early learning level as a community member to help us, to help teachers, to help school buildings? How can someone contribute as a volunteer in in, in how many settings? Okay, so I'm thrilled that you asked that question. Our next Early Childhood Advisory Council, which really is a group of business people teachers, administrators, countywide, uh, that focus on birth to age eight. Our, meet, our next meeting is September 12th. It'll be on the at the Downsville Pike Building, Central Office Building for Washington County Public Schools from 12 o'clock to 2 o'clock. We are welcoming anybody that would like to come and become involved, and there's enough partners in that group that can steer them in the right direction of how they would like to, to be a part of this. Right. What What are some options? What What are some options that you know, that folks could get involved in. I mean, if they're hearing you two today, take me out of the equation because I could be hampering the whole effort. But if they're hearing you two today and said, boy, I'd love to help out. You know, I I love the younger kids. I love the teachers in the younger, you know, these elementary schools are strapped. They have, you know, all kinds of challenges. How can I help out? How can they help out? Certainly. So all of our schools welcome volunteers Mm -hmm. on on a daily basis, I would say. So that that's one area. Uh, we have little free libraries across the county that sometimes just need filled, and those are types of things that they can do. Um, we also had um, different events that we've had through the year to help with readiness, and we actually had a readiness Olympics back in June. Yeah, yeah. That we had set up at the fairgrounds, and we had different stations set up where the stu- the kids could play with their parents as we talked with them and talked about the importance of play, and had gave them handouts and they got books, and it was just a fun day for them. So there were a thousand things on that agenda. <laughs> I mean, there were so many stations. I, we got the public service announcements here. We got them in our office at the school system, you know, to get the word mm-hmm. out from our corner too. So there were a gazillion <laughs> things going on that day. But we always want volunteers for things like that as well to help with. Right. Mm-hmm. So, I, I mean, it's as simple as maybe contacting the school in your neighborhood, the elementary mm-hmm. school closest to you, talking with, you know, the building administration, talking with the secretaries, and just sort of getting a foot in the door and seeing what the process is just to be able to volunteer. I just, I, I never, a part of it was because of my own kids going through school, and I, I mean, I knew the value of being able to volunteer mm-hmm. and you know, help out a teacher who's got 20 some kids and just, you know, um, and and honestly, and this is, um, it's a little bit one-sided, but I think there's value in this. I think, uh, particularly at the elementary level, 
um, for guys, I think there's much there's a lot of value in guys volunteering because I I think I think the younger kids see way more female adults on the teaching staff and at the building you know at the building administration, probably maybe at home too, you know with the way families are fractured these days. So I, you know for the guys for the guys if you have some time to be able to volunteer. In, in your local, particularly the elementary schools, man, there is a lot of value in that. I know I got, you know, you get the, oh, my God, Mr. Kaufman, thank you so much for helping out. Well, I, it was fun, first of all, mm-hmm. and my own kids were there for part of those, for, you know, part of the, that volunteer time. But beyond that, there were so many other kids who benefited from, you know, whatever I did, but also that a male figure was also doing that with them that made some, evidently made some difference. Mm-hmm. So. Absolutely. I do. I believe that there is a dad's program that is offered through the family center, too. So that's another outlet, too. So there's tons of opportunities, really, even if folks would just reach out to Kelly or myself, Mm -hmm. we can we absolutely partner with enough organizations that we could we could link them up with something that they're really interested in that would that would be beneficial Mm -hmm. to our children. Okay, this show, if you're hearing it live is one thing, if you're if you're getting it after the fact. This show is is uh, here in mid July and a little bit past that now. What's the rest of the summer between the two of you? What's the rest of the summer look like? This six weeks, seven weeks. So both of us are continually um, <laughs> participating in professional development as right. well because learning is lifelong for us as well. Uh, but truly, we're, our focus now is enrollment so that we make sure all of our classrooms are fully enrolled. We'll also be working with our own pre K teachers just to take a look at our. Um, curriculum work and just preparing them for a really a really strong start to the school year our pre-k teachers in the month of august will be probably visiting every home they do home visits in oh, which they'll take oh, oh, um, is that right mm-hmm. i didn't know that they'll take um huh. this year um, we're fortunate enough to be part of a, of a state grant where they'll be able to offer 50 books to every child upon the home visit so they'll be visiting with both families and students just to better transition them into pre-K, so it's not quite a scary experience. They've already met the teacher. They've, um, in many cases, already met the paraprofessional that'll be working in the classroom. So we started that last year. It was extremely successful, and and we're looking forward to it again this year. Every teacher is taking 50 books to every pre-K household. Absolutely. My guess is that some of those pre-K households, that's 50 more than they have today. Wow, that's incredible. It's awesome. It really is. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay, so what do you have? What do you have to do in the what? next six weeks? I help Stacy out with whatever she needs. <laughs> yeah. yeah, because it's not a one-person operation. It is not. <laughs> we are a team, and just really, we have a lot to do in these next six weeks. But we're ready to have a good start. Right. Teachers come back that last week before school. Right. Um, and then it's crunch time. Is the teaching force ready to go? Uh, at uh, just at the sheer personnel level are we good to go on our teaching staff i think so we have um all of our teachers in place all of our paraprofessionals in pr- place and like i said they're all we've seen many of them participate in professional development this summer so they're already geared up and many of them are already reaching out to us saying can i see my class list do i know oh, yeah, who yeah. students are so th- mm-hmm. so they're they're raring to go they're excited mm-hmm. for, does, it, for does um, class rosters vary from building to building the area in the county to area I mean, some ratios are a little for bigger pre-K, than pre-K. It's um, a ten to one ratio, mm-hmm. and and that's a that's a state um, recommendation. Oh, right. So we typically don't go over twenty in a pre-K classrooms, and some in some instances we'll we'll go up to twenty one, twenty two. Um, but we we look at a lot of factors before we do that. But typically, it's it's ten to one. Right. Final thought before we go. Uh, look forward to a great year. We've been making a lot of progress in the area of early learning in Washington County Public Schools. We're very appreciative of a superintendent who's supportive of early learning and understands the importance of an education right from the very beginning. All right, Kelly, you're the new girl here. You're, you're, you get the final word. <laughs> I'm just glad to be here today, and I'm glad you had us. And just please reach out to us, Stacey or myself, if you have any questions or need anything or any way we can help you. Whether as parents grandparents or just community members there's a role for everybody yes, right. i believe yes good thank you too very much thank appreciate you, you coming thank on you. dr stacy henson is supervisor of early learning kelly longerbeam an early learning specialist and lead teacher at funkstown primary today's show has been sponsored by volvo group trucks a premier employer in washington county 
follow them on Facebook at Volvo Group Hagerstown or visit the website volvogroup.com slash Hagerstown. This is Lunchtime Live, heard the third Thursday of the month, a partnership between Washington County Public Schools and WJEJ.